Hello guys, welcome back to RX Tech's Pathology once again. I'm Dr. Anjit and we're going to see one more interesting case discussion today. We're going to talk about papillary renal cell carcinoma. The older type 1, type 2 and the newer WHO is not given much emphasis on type 1, type 2 but the, the categories still do exist, right? So we're going to see what is papillary renal cell carcinoma in a gist and also the difference between type 1, type 2 neoplasms, uh, the morphological difference and also the IHC difference and let's go to uh, slides and let's discuss a real case as well, right? So if you're first time here, click on the subscribe button and follow move for pathology updates, tips and many, many things about pathology residency and life of a pathologist, fine? So let's go di deep dive into the video first of all. See, papillary assay, as the name says, you're going to have papillary appearance by default, right? So the grade one or the type one papillary assay will have a purely normal papillary with a lining by cuboidal or a kind of a columnar epithelium with the nucleus located in the base, right? The base nuclei is one of the characteristic finding in a normal type 1 papillary RCG. This is a predominant histological subtype as well. Sometimes, not always, sometimes you might see good amount of histiocytes in the core of the papillae. This is a finding. As per the new WHO, this is not uh, essential criteria to diagnose but it's definitely a desirable criteria to diagnose type 1 papillary RCG. In addition to that, you will have your classical summer bodies. Again, that's a desirable criteria, not a very important must known criteria, right? So here, you have a well-formed papillary network. Sometimes it might be very, very closely aligned, might look like a back-to-back -back arranged papillary. That time it might be a bit difficult to delay the papillary architecture. But whenever you go to the area where there's a good amount of histiocytic aggregate, you can easily see the papillary architecture. The nuclei is not very high grade compared to type 2 RCC. It's the decent grade nuclei. It will vary definitely, but predominant of them are mostly on the lower side of the grade of the nuclei, right? And let's go to the type 2 and then let's come back to the type 1 when we go to the IHC part, right? Type 2, what the WHO says exactly is it's more of a thin and a delicate papillary network, it might overlap a lot. Maybe like the papillary network of a serious cystic you know, custom of ovary, if you have seen that quite often, right? So one, it's a very thin, delicate papillary network. Second, this is very, very characteristic. Stratification. The stratification or pseudo stratification is very characteristic of a type 2 papillary RCG. And the third and the most important thing is, if you look at them, the nuclei of the type 2 RCG are all hobnailed, right? It's a hobnailed nuclei. It will be at the tip. Here, the nuclei will be in the base. That's why I said it's very important for me to differentiate type 1 and type 2. It's kind of a protruding nuclei, like a hobnail appearance of a nuclei will be there, right? Because of this hobnail appearance, WHO clearly says that there are a few textbooks which they call them as reverse polarity. See, when you say reverse polarity, it means that uh, normal polarity of every columnar cell is the basal nuclei. Here, the nuclei goes to the tip. That's why we call them reverse polarity. Not often, few textbooks do mention about them, right? Here, the grade of the nuclei will be definitely more than a type 1 RC, uh, papillary RCC and obviously when the grade is more, the prognosis also alters based, based on that, fine. So there is very stark histological differences between these two. There is no doubt about that. If you are finding it difficult to call which type 1 or type 2 based on histology, which I am sure it will not be a problem for you guys, IHC will definitely help come in handy. Type 2 RCC are positive for GATA3 and CD10 most of the time. GATA3 is a very good marker for you in case of type 2 RCC. And type 1 papillary RCC is generally GATA1 negative, which is an important finding for you to note. A marker will be positive irrespective of the subtypes, but in case of a uh, type 1 papillary RCC, a marker is more extensively positive, and here they're less extensively positive. I'm not saying it's less positive, it's less extensively positive, right? They are positive in both of them. There's no difference, in, uh, there's no doubt in that. Here it's less extensively positive, and in the type 1 RCC is more extensively positive, that's all. Type 1 RCC has good amount of CK7 positivity. Here CK7 will be negative in case of a type 2 RCC, right? So I would say that... Uh, a GATA3 and a CK7 which will be available will help you to differentiate if this is a type 1 RCC or a type 2 RCC with ease. It's not a problem at all, right? That's regarding the histomorphology and the IHC difference between a type 1 papillary RCC and a type 2 papillary RCC. Let's deep dive into a case. Uh, this is from one of our archives. Let's see if I can view that. Okay. I'm not sure how good it will zoom in uh, in this uh, digital board. Let's see. See, it's a very low power view. I'm sure you can see here itself. Uh, let me take a pen if possible. Can you see that this area is your normal renal parenchyma, right? Even this power, I hope you can appreciate the tubules and everything, right? Here you have the tumor, here you have the tumor, right? Big areas of tumor, and here also obviously it's a tumor section. There's the fat, 
the perirenal fat could be an uh, invasion of that will def is important to grade the to stage the thing we'll look at that everything in some other detail video fine so this is the normal architecture normal orientation of the tumor here right now let's zoom let's take a look at it and let's zoom it i hope it's proper and it's a bit easy to zoom uh, let's see see this is what i was saying in more of the solid area it's a bit difficult to identify okay it's a papillary lesion right and my zoom is a little bit slow okay look at this so you do have good amount of papillary architecture right maybe go to the little bit less pronounced less solid areas you might see it a little bit more efficiently wait i'll show you perfect papillary architecture this is a, this is a beautiful papillary architecture right there's no doubt uh, will arise in your mind this is papillary architecture or not right though it's not properly zooming if you have the rxjs app downloaded and have a look at it it's much easier and visible there there's a big screen it's not properly loading for sure right okay so that's one thing so i do have a good amount of papillary architecture here and these are your foamy histiocytes there's a good collection of foamy histiocytes right look at them look at them like i said it's not a must criteria but definitely a desirable criteria for me to call it a papillary assay right let's try our best let's zoom in further i hope it will zoom if given some time ah uh, good good decent decent zoom right okay so you can see the papillary architecture here okay right let's give it a refresh okay it's still a little bit accommodative for zoom i uh if you have the rxd app please go into the app uh, i'm not able to clearly delineate and talk about the nuclear features here but i'm sure the architecture wise i'm sure you can appreciate the papillary structure here yes papillary structure here i'm sure you can appreciate the papillary structures here right it's not very difficult to appreciate the papillary structure that's one characteristic finding second characteristic finding is the foamy histocytes that's diagnostic as well right that's in short about papillary assay if you want any more uh, questions or any more uh, slides to be discussed put in the comment section let's discuss one by one and like hopefully i'll solve this glitch uh, going forward and we don't have anything uh, stopping us from learning pathology right see you soon till then bye bye from dr anjit bye bye